Hey guys, it's Sister Muriel with Pitching It Real. I missed you guys. I've been gone for a couple of weeks. Hey man, I had to take some time out for myself and gather myself so that I can be in position um, for God. Amen. And so now I'm back and I'm excited about the Word of God and ready to share again. So listen, I had an opportunity to go to Dallas this weekend. I wanted to go and surprise my daughter, and uh, I absolutely love the church that she attends. Um, she, her pastor name is uh, Pastor Gardner, Apostle Gardner, and uh, he was preaching today, and he was talking about compromise, and he basically was explaining how when you compromise on in one area, it can cause you to compromise in other areas. Amen. A little livid, livid a whole lot. Amen. And so I want to talk about being holy. Um, as I was on my way back from Dallas to Houston, I began to meditate on the word of God and the importance of the saints of God being in position to be used by God. He said in his scripture that if his people will humble themselves and pray and turn from their wicked ways, that he would heal the land. Amen. And how many of y'all want to see the land healed? It's so many people commit suicide. It's so many people miserable, um, hurt, angry. So many people sick. There's so many ways that the saints of God can assist God on the earth. Amen. He wants us to be his tools, his mouthpiece in the land. And there's so many opportunities for us to do that. And he wants to empower us with the, with the, his gifts. Amen. But there are some things that we are going to need to do. Amen. To be in position to do those things. And not saying that God can't use you right where you are because he absolutely can. But I, I do believe that the more you get closer to God, the more you desire the things of God and the more he empowers you, the more you hear from him. Amen. The more better you can be led by the Holy Spirit. But let's look at the word of God. We're going to look at First Peter chapter 1 verses 13 through 17. And I'm going to be reading from the NIV version. It says, Therefore, with minds that are alert and fully sober, set your hope on the grace to be brought to you when Jesus Christ is revealed at his coming. Verse 14, as obedient children. So even in the word, God is asking us to be obedient. Amen. And not to compromise in, in areas. Amen. He says, as obedient children, do not conform to the evil desires you had when you lived in ignorance. Before you were saved, set free, and delivered, you lived a certain type of lifestyle. Amen. For me, for example, I did like to dance. I like to party. Um, I drink a little. I couldn't handle it, so I didn't do too much. Um, promiscuity, my gosh, you know. And so what God is saying is, before you accept me as your personal Savior, when you were ignorant to the things of God, he said, don't live like that anymore. Amen. He said, but, in verse 15, but just as he who called you is holy, just like God is holy, so be holy in all you do. All means all. Not just when you're at church. Not just when you're in front of the saints of God. All means all. All means when nobody else is looking, does your life line up with the word of God? Amen. The things that you do, would you invite Jesus to do those things with you? Would you hand Jesus a, a drink? Would you take Jesus to that bedroom and commit adultery or fornication? And the thing about it is, is you can't close him out because he's everywhere. He's all seeing God. Amen. So just because the saints of God can't see you do the things that you do that doesn't line up with the word of God. God sees and knows all. So again... Verse 15 said, but just as he who called you is holy. Jesus, God, is holy. Just as that, he says, so be holy in all you do. And a lot of saints do not like to hear that. And I'm not trying to act like I'm perfect. Please don't believe that just because I'm bringing this word today that I feel like I'm, I'm perfect. But the thing about it is, is I love God so much that in the minute of adversity, in the minute that I see myself falling, I repent so fast and I'm godly sorry and I get up, shake that thing off and move on. Amen. 
The enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. He comes to tempt us. Amen. But as quick and as fast as you realize that that thing doesn't line up with the word of God, repent and turn away from that thing. Amen. He said in verse 16, for it is written, be holy because I am holy. I am so sick and tired of hearing people saying, well, I'm human. I'm flesh. You know, mm -mm. that excuse is not going to fly when you stand before God. And see, I think a lot of reasons why we, and I say we, because I have had moments, I will have moments, but because we don't have immediate repercussion for the things that we do, we think it's okay. Oh, I'm sorry, God. Oh, I'm sorry. Oops. Because you enjoy it, because you like it, because your flesh. The Bible said we're drawn away by the lust of the flesh. So we have to gauge monitor, look at it, examine our lust level. And I did say lust. The Bible said we are drawn away from the lust of our flesh. So whatever you like, that's what the enemy is going to tug you at because he knows your weakness. He knows your weaknesses. So if you like drinking, he going to turn that up. If you like men, he going to turn it up. If you like women, he going to turn it up. If you like, uh, crazy stuff on TV, he going to turn it up. He is going to draw you away. Like the pastor was preaching today, draw your heart away from God with the things that you enjoy the most. That's why the Bible said you have to count up the cost. You have to take up the cross. You have to deny yourself. And not that God doesn't want you to enjoy life. He does. But he still wants you to be holy. And he doesn't want your life, amen, to take somebody else down. He said, if you cause another brother to fail, that brother blood is going to be on your hand. And that was the main focus when I was riding back was compromised Christianity. It is sad that for so many years, we have had pastors, and I'm sorry, I got to say it. We have had pastors that live compromised lives. And because they compromise, the followers compromised. It's not funny to be called a cussing Christian. It's not funny to find you at a bar turning up when somebody down from you is trying to turn up to drown the pain and sorrows that they're in. Take that last drink and commit suicide. Our lives are supposed to be beacons of hope, beacons of light. And I know a lot of people are not going to like this. Because I even had this conversation with a couple of friends not too long ago. It wasn't quite on this level, but it was about a certain subject where everybody thinks it's okay just to do a little bit of this and a little bit of that and a little bit of this and a little bit of that. To the point to where I was like, well, what is wrong with me? But there's nothing wrong with me. And I'm not judging anybody. I'm not trying to act like I'm better than anybody. What I'm saying is, I have such a desire to please God to where I want everything, like the scripture says, all to line up. My thoughts, my habits, the way I eat, the way I treat people. The way I live behind closed doors, the way I raise my children, my grandchildren. I want it all to line up. So if that means that I have to be on a little island by myself, then so be it. I am not going to compromise. In my lifetime, I've seen one man of God. And he taught me this. He actually did a sermon about holiness. And that is the only... Pastor, and I'm sorry if you are living like this, I haven't seen you yet. But in my lineage and my walk, that I seen that would not do anything without seeking God. And when you're in His presence, you felt God. Can people see and feel God in your presence?
Does the love of God and the anointing of God exuberate out of you? When people pass by you, are they healed? Are they set free? Can they sense hope, healing? Or are you just entertainment for Sunday morning? Don't you know that Sunday morning is not the most important day? It's what you do Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday if you don't go to Bible study, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. It is getting to the point, Lord have mercy, I might get beat up behind this, but I don't care. To the point where we as Christians are entertaining one another. We know the word. We come every Sunday morning to entertain each other. But what are we doing with the word Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday? Amen. So we're going to look at verse 17. Since you call on the Father who judges each person's work impartially, live out your time as a foreigner here in reverent fear. That's where I am. I don't want to look like the rest of them. I don't want to talk like the rest of them. I'm working on the way I dress. Amen. I love the trendiness. But again, just like I said, I'm not perfect. We all have something that we need to work on. Amen. But because of the Holy Spirit that works on the inside of me, it convicts me in areas where I need to clean it up. And that's all I'm saying. I'm not saying that I'm perfect. I'm not saying that you're imperfect. What I'm saying is let's get to the point to where we desire the things of God more than we desire the things of the world. Let's get to the point to where The song says, break my heart, God, with what breaks yours. Do you know what makes God's heart break? Can you feel people pain? Can you sit someone that needs a hug? Can you see the need of somebody and just walk on, walk on by? We need to get on our post. Amen. And I'm talking to myself because this year, the conviction, and I'll make a confession, a confession that God has told me that I bump my gums more than I work. And I know a lot of people think, oh, Jones, you always doing this, you always doing that. You're... God has called me to increase my works and to shut my mouth. When you see the need, go fix it, go meet it. What are you doing? I am totally convicted about the number of works that I've done for God. God is so awesome and he deserves all of me. He gives me life. He gives me breath. He heals me. Why would God heal me just to gloat in myself? I'm believing God for a supernatural healing of my heart. And to remain cancer free in my breast. Now when he heals me. As he heals me. As he continues to heal me. That is so that he can be glorified. So that I can go tell and encourage somebody else. Stop making excuses for the things that you do. I apologize for all other pastors and ministers. Who have come before you. And lived compromised lives. So that it has convinced you that it is okay to look and do the things of the world. In this scripture right here in verse 17, he said, live like foreigners. We're supposed to be peculiar people. They're supposed to be able to distinguish us from them. And like the pastor said, we've brought so much world into the church to where the people don't even know the difference between the church and the world. They don't even want our God. Well, if y'all going to live like that, then I might as well go and live like this. And you know why that is? Because like the Bible says, we're a selfish generation. We want what we want, how we want it, and when we want it. 
and we don't care who it hurts. And the amazing thing is we're not bothered because we don't have immediate reproduction. But it says here that the father who judges each person's works, all our works are going to be judged. All our works are going to be judged. Scripture says all our works are going to be judged. So again, I love you. And this is not a message. This is, hey, come on, y'all. People are dying every day and God needs us. And he wants to use us. And then we sing the songs, miracles, signs, and wonders. But they can't flow through us if we're not living right. And I promise, guys, when you give those things up, you're still going to enjoy life. See, the enemy has us tricked and fooled. Oh, you can't have no fun if you don't do this. Oh, you can't have no fun if you don't do that. But you know what? I find so much fun with God. Me and God drive down the street laughing, hee-haw, all day long. I love being in his presence. He's the best friend in the whole wide world. And he's fun, guys. He doesn't want to take things away from you to make you miserable. He wants to take things away from you so that you can be blessed. And like the Bible said, have good success. So I know I'm not going to get a lot of amens on this one, but it's okay. I have to do it. I had to do it. Because God loves you. And he chastens those that he loves. Amen. And because God loves you, I love you too. And I have to be obedient. Amen. And it was real hard to come on and do this video. It, it was. Um, in fact, I had to start it up for like three times. But you know what? All I can do is read the scripture. And then it's up to you to decide what you want to do with it. Amen. Again, I'm not perfect. <clears throat> By no means, I am not perfect. I am still working some things out. And I believe that's why God gave this to me. Because as I work stuff out, he knows that I'm not afraid to put my business out there on the line. Amen. I do do a lot of things at church and, and, and with other you know people. But it's not enough. It's not enough. There's always room for some more. You know, and so a lot of times we have to put our mouth, our, how do you say it? How do you say when you put your mouth where you, where you work, where you work, where your mouth is, whatever. In other words, he's saying shut up and be about his business. Amen. And that's what 2018 is about. It's about doing God's will, denying myself, trusting God. He said, if I seek you first, the kingdom of God, that he's going to add everything that I need to me. Amen. So as far as my house, he'll add the house. As far as my husband, he'll add the husband. As far as my healing, he's going to add the healing. I've already had one good praise report this year. Amen. And believe in God for some more. But regardless, I want to go out. Amen. Doing the perfect will of God. Because he deserves all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. Amen. So guys, go ahead and meditate on First Peter. <clears throat> And see what God tells you. And if you're okay with where you are, that's fine. But if you desire to hear, well done, my good and faithful servant, amen, then go dig in their word and find out what the Father has for you, amen. I love you and I pray that God richly bless you and empower you to walk out all things that are not of him, amen. And then I pray supernatural healing joy into your life in the name of Jesus. And I thank God that everything that you touched this year will prosper in Jesus' name. Again, this is not a condemnation video. This is just a video to remind us that we belong to God. He died on the cross for us, guys. We owe him our life. He's not requiring us to do that. Amen. He's just requiring us to be obedient children. So let's obey God. Amen. And we shall eat the good of the land. Hallelujah. Love you.